Hello, I am Dr. John I. Takayama from the Department of Pediatrics at the University of California, San Francisco. On behalf of UCSF, I would like to convey our deepest condolences to the people of Japan affected by the earthquake, tsunami, and related disasters. This video is for those who care for children, including parents, grandparents, relatives, child care workers, teachers, and medical personnel. I will describe how adults can better manage the stress reactions that children may continue to exhibit. The range of stress reactions in children can be placed into five categories. One, physical reactions, headache, stomach ache, diarrhea, shaking spells. Two, emotional reactions, bouts of crying, feeling sad, feeling irritable, feeling fearful, losing joy or interest in favorite activities. Three, reactions that affect daily living, sleep problems, appetite loss, not wanting to do anything. Four, behavioral reactions, school refusal, not wanting to participate in activities, difficulty concentrating. And five, developmental reactions, loss of milestones, for example, bedwetting when this was not a problem previously, and temper tantrums. These are all symptoms of stress response. Many of the current disaster problems related to the earthquake and tsunami, such as aftershocks, radiation fears, lack of electricity, have continued. Stress reactions, therefore, may also persist from weeks to months. Living in shelters, moving to a new home, and starting a new school may also pose new stressors and symptoms may recur or worsen. How can adults who spend time with children best manage children's stress response? According to a disaster response manual in the U.S., the three key methods are 1. Listen, 2. Protect, and 3. Connect. 1. During or after a disaster, children, like adults, may have anxieties and worries. Adults can listen to children by first asking, Can you tell me what frightened you? Tell me what you're thinking. Ask gently, take time, and in an age-appropriate way. Children may repeat their stories over and over again, and that is their way of coping with stress. Nonverbal communication, such as drawing, may be useful methods of communication, especially for young children. 2. To protect them from long-term mental effects of disaster, children should return to normal routines as much as possible and avoid news or television episodes that may remind them of disasters. Adults can help by not constantly watching, listening to, or discussing such news. 3. It is also important to connect children to supportive adults. Children, by participating in helpful activities, can gain self-confidence. Group activities can foster team spirit and emotional stability. Finally, adults who care for children must look after themselves. Children may be aware of fatigue in adults and, as a result, not ask for help. Adults, by remaining calm, not getting irritated or angry, not overworking, and setting aside time to spend time with family, can model positive behavior for children. For further information, please go to www.ucsf.edu.